Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Nick and today we are building another house in The Sims 4 and I can't even begin to express how excited I am to be back sharing another video with you. It has been quite some time. All of the winter holidays have passed. It's a new year. I hope that you had the best time celebrating all of those and that your new year has started off just incredibly. My laptop, for those of you who don't follow me on Twitter, it stopped working on me again. And I was really, really upset because I had so many fun plans for Christmas builds to share with you but I wasn't able to create anything. So I got a nice little break that was extremely unexpected, but alas, we're back building another house. And this one, I really, really, really like it. And I think you will as well. I titled it the Modern Brick City Home just because of the location. It's more downtown. It's definitely modern. And I imagine it's what would be built if you were to have a new construction in a newer neighborhood in an urban area. It has three bedrooms, which really could be four. There's a gigantic office on the first floor, which I think you're going to love. And there is a large living area on the third floor, which you'll see towards the end of the video with a smaller bedroom up there. So you can shuffle things around however you like. There's a lot of space in this house though. It costs $75,000, so you're gonna have to save up for a little bit or use that mother load cheat to place it into your world. But if you wanted to do that, you can find it on the Sims 4 gallery under my user ID, Nick Last Game. There will be a link in the description of this video to find the home and you won't need any custom content to download it, which is great. You can just put it right in your game and start playing or make any changes whatsoever. I would love to see all the changes that you make to the house. It does use quite a bit of packs because I have every single one of them, but you don't need those to download the build. It will just replace it with content that you do have. Now that we've gotten through pretty much my regular spiel about the house, what do you think of it so far? It's three stories. It has this really cool balcony at the front. I love how the driveway and the front porch area are all just on the same level. Usually I'll put houses on a foundation, but this one I was just feeling really inspired to keep it low to the ground and all the same thing, but I do end up changing the actual pavement that I use for the driveway just to create a different separation of spaces there. Now, you're seeing how I add different plants throughout. I try and just pick a few and go around the entire house and place them down all over so that it has a kind of cohesive look and that's my little trick for landscaping. I would love to hear any of your tricks and tips for any part of the build really. I love hearing from you guys and seeing what you like and maybe some takeaways you had what uh, you would want to include in your future builds. You could even tell me your least favorite part of this build so that I know what I need to work on. I will not be offended. Just, you know, be nice. <laughs> Please. Now we're adding just a few extra windows. I did the floor plan and the bathrooms off camera just so that I had an understanding of the shape that the house would take. But once I had figured that out, I still included those extra windows and so you could see where I was adding them. Now we're decorating the back porch. I like to do the outside spaces of the house before going inside just because I find that when I'm done with the house I don't want to have to go outside and then finish landscaping or anything. I would rather just tackle the entire exterior all at once and then well I guess all at once is a little bit of a lie because I will go in and do the floor plan just to see if there's any changes I would need to make but for your viewing sake it's all at the same time but I added these really cool hanging plants that I thought just really complimented complemented this space there's a lot of rectangular shapes going on so I think any place that I could get some more organic shapes going on circles and 
just foliage. It really benefits from that, all these different curves throughout some of the decorations and like that sofa, for example. Now we're on this upper third floor balcony and it's just so cute. I would love to hang out up there and watch the sunset or fireworks on the 4th of July. Now we're inside and you can see there's this really spacious entryway, which I think if you don't want this large of an entryway, you could easily close it off, shrink it a little bit and add to some of the other rooms. There is a powder room down here right off the entryway. And here you can see I'm adding the dining room and I put in this bench in place of the two chairs on the other side. So unfortunately you won't be able to use that seating for dining, but it looks really nice. And that was a trade-off that I was willing to make. If you would rather have that be seating, of course you can go in and just replace some few extra chairs in there but I don't think you'll really need it because there are only three beds in the house. So I imagine everyone could fit at a dining table with four people, but you know, if you have friends over or something, you might need those extra spaces. So go ahead and change that. Now we're on to the living room, which is super modern and has this really cool fireplace and a stone wall backdrop to it. I went through and I added all of the different wallpapers and floorings and tiles beforehand just because it really helps guide me as I figure it out and it just, I don't know, makes it all come together and feel cohesive because I would totally make every single room a different style and different vibe if I wanted to. I really struggle with that cabinet, <laughs> I don't know why. Here's this mudroom off of the kitchen, it leads to the back but there is that big double sliding glass door so that you can also access the back patio that way. I didn't know if I wanted to put laundry in this house. I actually didn't, which is unusual for me. I love including washers and dryers. I imagine if you were to have it, it would probably go there. Or you could take out one of the many closets. I really liked including all of those built-in closets because I think it's a really realistic touch but I'm not the biggest fan of how they all look aesthetically. I would love to see in some future packs just a new built-in closet because it's a really cool object, but we haven't gotten them since I think one of the first or second packs, so long overdue. Here's that office I was talking about. Sometimes you'll see me change the size of objects with the tool mod. You don't need it to download the house. I'm sorry, I forgot to cut that one out. Usually I try and get those, but no biggie at all. Now we're just adding in some custom little details to that bookshelf, and we're already on the second floor. There's this really long hallway landing area that I didn't know what to do with. I wanted to have that longer rug with the different kind of the pattern that you just saw, but I did use it in the primary suites bathroom. So even though I was thinking about using it in a different color, I just wanted to challenge myself to use something else. So I don't even know if I replaced it with one, but here I'm adding in some more bookshelves. I decorated the home for what I imagine to be roommates, but you could make it any different family dynamic possible. And I would love to hear who you ended up putting in this house to live there. There is the primary suite which has the double bed and then the two guest rooms just have single beds but I think you could take out some of those closets and easily fit in some bigger beds if you needed. You could also add a basement. There's just so many things you could do to this house. I really like it. And I think that's why a lot of newer builds are looking like this. It's really practical. There's lots of bathrooms, lots of light total privacy with the kitchen living and dining being all on the first floor so you just have all this extra space and this is one of my favorite primary suites i've ever decorated i think it has a really calming color scheme with these neutral tones and this cool tapestry on the wall i also really like that horizontal wood paneling on the wall with the closets. I thought that was a nice touch and just made it feel a little bit beachy actually. 
Now we're going upstairs and I struggled with this a little bit as you can see. I didn't know if I wanted to make it a theater room or just a seating area. I ended up putting a bar up there which you'll see and I added this window at the end and I think it's a really cool shape. I think it is a lot more classic than a lot of other windows in this house just because it looks more pained but I think it's a nice touch and the bar is a really nice thing to have up there if you're entertaining. We're gonna wrap up this video just decorating this bathroom and then on to some screenshots. So thank you all for watching. Thank you for 100 subscribers. I promise my dream house series is coming very, very, very soon in celebration of that. So I will catch you guys, everybody, in the next one. Have a great day. Bye.